Hi, I'm Max, your virtual assistant for SonarWorks software. Welcome to this speaker measurement walkthrough with the Sound ID Reference Measure app. The Measure app is already packed with easy to follow tutorials and visuals, but there are some tips and tricks to ensure you get a quick, accurate, and trouble free measurement on your first try. You can launch Measure from the Applications folder or the desktop icon. For this demonstration, We'll measure a stereo speaker setup using Sound ID reference for speakers and headphones. To begin, click on Get Started and select 2.0 Stereo. Note that multi channel setups can also be measured with a multi channel license, but the regular license for speakers and headphones only supports stereo configuration. For instructions on how to measure a stereo setup with a subwoofer unit, check the support article linked below. Click Next to proceed. Before getting started, it is a good idea to check out any physical controls on your speakers. EQ knobs, high and low pass filters and other controls should be nullified and the volume levels between the speakers should be matched. It is best to start off with neutral settings. Now let's get back to the setup checklist and take care of the basic requirements for speaker measurements. Sonarworks measurement microphones require 48 volt phantom power, which must be turned on on your audio interface. It's crucial to use a proper XLR to XLR cable and avoid other connector types. If you don't get a signal from the microphone, try using a new cable. Audio interface. I'm using an Audient interface and I have my microphone and speakers connected to it. It is essential to have both your input and output connected to the same device. It's okay to use an additional microphone preamp unit, but avoid using two different audio interfaces for your I.O. And lastly, direct monitoring must be disabled. You shouldn't hear anything from the speakers if you tap on the mic. You should only see the input signal indicated on the screen visually. To do this, mute or turn down the mic channel while keeping the gain up. This covers the basic setup requirements for speaker measurements, but there are some additional tips and tricks to utilize in order to avoid getting stuck. The key to quick and easy measurements is simplicity. We recommend disconnecting all other audio hardware during the measurements, such as monitor controllers and other gear, leaving only your primary audio interface in the chain. If your audio interface or speakers feature any built-in DSP capabilities or effects processing, make sure those are turned off or bypassed. The same logic applies to software components. Close down all other audio software, such as virtual audio devices, DAWs, advanced audio capture and routing software. In conclusion, any hardware or software that uses your audio interface should be disconnected or disabled. After clicking Next, we'll select our microphone input channel. If the desired input channel does not show up in the drop-down menu, check the linked article below for possible solutions. Tap the mic to see the input level. If you can't see any input signal, double-check if the correct input channel is assigned, or go back to the initial setup checklist to make sure everything is in order. Proceed to the next step. If you own a Sonarworks microphone, enter its ID here. The ID is printed on the mic. We recommend using a Sonarworks measurement microphone as it comes individually pre-calibrated and the software utilizes the profile for accurate results. If you have a different measurement microphone, proceed with the second option. For more information on using third-party measurement mics, see the article linked below. Our measurement mic is available in our online store or find your nearest dealer via the distributor map linked below. The microphone calibration curves will now be displayed. The software will apply the correct curves automatically based on the speaker configuration. For stereo measurements, the software will use the zero and 30 degree profiles while the 90 degree profile is used for measuring multi-channel setups. Click Next to continue with the output setup. Make sure the correct channels are assigned. To verify the output signal, click on the test tone buttons. Left speaker. Right speaker. 
It's a good idea to check for any stereo image issues during this step, as small panning inconsistencies might not be audible. Panning should be centered. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. And you should also check your interface control software for any unusual settings that might interfere with the stereo image. Once done, click on Yes, my volume is set. A few things to keep in mind. Make sure all obstructions are removed from your workspace and listening area. Keep the microphone at ear level of the listening spot, which is your monitoring position. Point the mic straight forward. If the measurement is taking too long or if you encounter high noise levels, go back to the previous step and try lowering the input gain and increasing the output volume slightly for a better balance. Now let's dial in the microphone input gain. Measurement mics require a lot of power, and it's normal to see the gain indicators peaking on your device during this process. If you hear feedback noise from the speakers, it's possible you still have direct monitoring enabled. To resolve this, make sure the microphone channel is muted. Once the mic gain is in the green, stand by for measure to verify the signal and proceed to the next step. Then select the metric or imperial system and move on to the listening spot stage, which establishes the dimensions of our listening area. We're now about to do some up-close measurements of our speakers. For this, we'll have to identify the mid-range drivers of our speakers. This is simple for regular two-way speakers. However, it might not be obvious for speakers with multiple drivers. To easily identify the mid-range drivers on your speakers, we have linked a dedicated guide below, showing different speaker types. Stand on the outside of your speakers and hold the mic close to the mid-range driver. We begin with measuring the left speaker. Once finished, repeat the process for the right speaker. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Right speaker done. Review the dimensions and make manual adjustments if needed. Use a tape measure to verify the actual distance. Keep in mind that some differences between the measured and actual distances are expected. Usually, the measurements will be a few centimeters off, but the measure app can work with an error margin up to 20 centimeters, depending on the workspace and room properties. If the difference exceeds these values, chances are the setup requirements are not being met. In severe cases, an error dialog will pop up hinting towards the culprit. In such cases, follow the suggested support articles or find solutions in the Measure App Troubleshooting Guide linked below. Once done, you'll be asked to do the same in the listening spot to finish this step. Review the dimensions once more. The last stage of the measurement process is room response. The process consists of 37 measurement points. Move the mic to the indicated areas shown on screen. After verifying the mic position, the software will perform some measurement sweeps and guide you to the next measurement point. Note that the software can raise or lower the output volume automatically during this stage. In some cases, you may notice the microphone icon jumping around. This indicates that the software is unable to locate the mic properly. It could be a sample drift or a stereo image issue, so it's recommended to double check your settings. You can also try the alternative locating signals in preferences. With the room response stage completed, we can now check out the results. Hover over the graph to see the response values in detail and see the channel level and delay differences on the right-hand side. Name and save the measurement profile to finish the process. The profile will be saved in the SonarWorks projects directory by default. From here, you can apply the profile in the Sound ID Reference standalone app, DAW plugin, or export it to an integrated device.
select your preferred option and follow the directions on screen, or learn more about how to apply the calibration profile in the setup guides linked below. Enjoy the results and thanks for watching.